take a hood of buffalo to slow me down. What's that? It'll take a hood of, it takes a hood of buffalo to slow me down. <laughs> we have like a Bible study. And they were like, where's your sister? So I told them that, that she was at Girl Scouts. The pastor said that the Girl Scouts was a satanic organization. And there was somebody who would pick on him. I stood up for him. I stood up. Okay, I stood up to him. When I when I got off when I got off the bus and went to to set my stuff down at school, somebody hit me in in the back. I turned around and I mean I I literally clocked them. We went to the ground. Now All right, we're going to get started here, and uh, I don't want to take away any of the, the the moments that we have together uh, without recording and uh, getting this thing started. Uh. I'm AJ Hill. I've got two YouTube channels. We'll put this one on Latter-day Saints on Fire. And and uh, another uh, YouTube channel I have is Paul and AJ's Ex-Mormon Files. Where yeah. We debate. Yeah, I saw one of those videos. I yeah, so one of the, one of the videos on there, and that's where I had first seen you. Okay, good, good. Thank yeah, you. I, Thank you for love, watching, Rick. I love them, by the way. Yeah, good. I like them, thank by you. the way. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, a gentleman. We uh, he commented a couple of times on my uh, on some uh, video that he's talking about, and uh, his name is Rick Blue Blow. Bu no Bulow. Bulow. Yeah, I'm going to let him introduce himself. He's going to tell us about his conversion uh, uh, to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I imagine that he's got a great story for us. And I'm sure if you guys uh, are willing to sit through uh, uh, this and, uh, and watch it, you'll be more than entertained. He seems just off the off the uh, few minutes that we've been talking, he's a uh, bit of delight, and he's got a great uh, sense of humor. All right, Rick, your turn. Okay. Well, I, my, my name is Rick Bulo, and I was born Catholic in Chicago, in Chicago, Illinois. lived lived on the south side of Chicago. Moved to, and I was born Catholic, but not, but. You know, we, yeah, we we would go every week, and I would have, and I took the the Catholic commun communion and confirmation and and everything. Then moved to Florida in night in November of nineteen eighty seven at the age just just before my thirteenth birthday, and was right. And while in Florida, I was. Catholic, non-denomination, or no, Baptist, non-denominational, and Jeho true story, Jehovah's Witness. Yes, I was a Jehovah's Witness. Okay. And there was one other that I had never heard of at the time, and I don't know if you or your audience has heard of it, but it's called Swedenborgian. It, uh, don't ring a bell on my part. Yeah, well, there, yeah. So from what I, from what I could gather, there there was a minister named Emanuel Swedenborg, and you know he had brought up a couple of things that that I that I I, I won't get to here, but anyway, suffice to suffice it to say, I was I had attended a couple of their meetings before I had gone to to become a Jehovah's Witness. Now, interestingly. Enough. I had entertained the Jehovah's Witnesses at the door a couple of times, you know, and and I would get into debate, get into debates with them, and so I, so after a couple of years, you know, I I was at at rock bottom after I went to the Swedenborgian church for a couple of times, and. When I moved back home with with my mom, I I mean I mean I was a total totally rock bottom. So I joined the Jehovah's Witnesses, stayed 
and I was with them for about about 18 months to two years. And I mean, I just felt disaffected. And interestingly enough, I had, I had met a couple of sister missionaries to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints around 2003, 20, yeah, around 2002, 2003, on, on, on public tra transportation, what caught me was, was the, was the badges. So, so we got to talking and they gave me a book of Mormon and I had gone through, through the lessons, was about to be baptized, but life got in the way as, yeah. it, as it normally does. And then, and after I had met them and life got in the way, you know, I mean, I consider myself spiritual with, with my beliefs aligned more toward the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And, you know, I mean, you know, okay, I think the, I think the best way to say it is if someone has book knowledge, but not street knowledge or vice versa, you know, like they know the Bible, but they don't live the Bible. Right, right. And so, so I had a question for you. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's obvious that we, uh, uh, you, you talked about all the me uh, medical things that you're going through. Is that because it's important for us to kind of give us a uh, a, a glimpse into your life, and uh, if you care to share, uh, hey, you, I, you I am an you're, open book. Yeah, you 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 said that you're in a wheelchair. Is that right? No, I, I'm not in a wheelchair. Okay, I was okay. Born see, with I certain... see, I, I I I'm confused by no. our conversation. That's why no. we do these interviews, like yeah. so that because when you start typing, things get uh kind of missed. Okay, so. Quite understandable, but yeah. yeah. So I was born with with cerebral palsy. Okay. And and now I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at the age of two, even though the doc, even though my mom knew that there was something wrong wrong with me when I was born. Right. You know, like I wasn't developing well. Okay. And keep in mind, you know, okay, I was born in 74, diagnosed with it around 77. My birthday's in December, so so I was so I was diagnosed with it in in 77. Right. Now now since 77, there's been a lot of technology. You know, yeah, medical a lot medicine. of medical changes and I, I wouldn't say advantage advantages but but medicine now has come a long way since it was back right. in back in the 70s so but yeah and so, so how's uh was there um what are the symptoms of uh cerebral palsy say so, so that people can understand uh okay where uh how you uh, have to navigate because that's an important uh, 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 part of your life. I imagine yeah. I've been with you all your life, so it's kind of yeah, good, right. To kind yeah. of get a backstory on that. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the things that I'm sure you you notice now is the fact that I stutter or I stop and you know just say well, well, like I said, you know, just say you know and stuff like that. So there's that, you know. I'm able to walk and run, but not as fast or as far as other people. Right, right. You know, and and okay, along those lines, I have I I have a bad sense of balance at times. Right. You know, so 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 that's my thing now. I had gone. To, to a doctor a couple months ago and they said that it might not be cerebral palsy because I hadn't seen a doctor for this, you know, since 87. Okay. You know, before I moved to Florida. So there, and there was really, you know, nothing that they could do then. Sure. So, so with the new medic, so with, 
the with the be advances in in, in medical now, you know, you know, it may not be civil palsy, but something else. Okay. Yeah. How, how did you uh, uh, ad ad adapt to school and things like that? Was school kind of difficult, or were you? I, yeah, actually, I was. I was horrible at school. So I mean, I mean, here I am, a, a mm -hmm. almost a normal human being, but my dad was dyslexic, and I know that I had to go to. Uh, uh, remedial Medial. reading and comprehension for most, even into the Air Force. So uh, even if we're physically look where, well, sometimes things don't connect uh, you know, to what is written on a page or whatever that looks like. Yeah. Did you have any struggles in school? Uh, I I did. Socially and, or, or you know, in, in, uh, uh, through intellectually? A, yeah. Yeah, so I I've always had trouble, you know, writing. I mean, I mean, my handwriting is horrendous. True story. When I was in tenth grade, or right. rather, when I was in eleventh grade, I I I had gone to a tenth grade English class for a semester because I was so bad in school that I flunked one class. So when I was a year ahead, you know, I was in a year back English for for half a semester so i had this one teacher who i i handed him a paper and he would glance so he would he would always have to adjust it and do and just pull the paper you know back you know so, so he could read it yeah. yeah yeah so but yeah i mean my handwriting is horrendous so so that was one of the so that was mainly my struggle, plus the fact that, you know, like, okay, there are some things that I can, that, I, that I'm that i good at, right. but, it, you know, which affects some of, and there are some things that I'm bad at, which yeah. sometimes affects some of the things, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I was in all regular classes, except for special ed you know, specialized physical education. Right. So I had a question. Um, so obviously you have some uh, some uh, uh, special qualities or special talents that you have, you know, where God gives us these uh, hard things in life, but he also blesses our lives with uh, uh, attributes or abilities that, uh, that create a... Uh, a whole new world for us. Uh, did you did you notice that you you said something about uh, school where you were you could struggle like in English or something like that? Did you have some of the subjects that you were good at? History. Okay. History, civics, you know, social studies. As a, as a matter of fact, okay, I, I am so okay. I like history so much that. In 2021, my mom and I drove from Florida up to the Washington, D.C. area, which is because my sister, brother-in-law, and niece live up here. And in 2021, you know, I had started visiting some of this, some of the historical sites like Molasses, Bull, Bull Run Creek, Appomattox Courthouse, you know, Fort Sumter I visited in 2021. And so, so history is my forte. Politics and civics is also my forte, especially considering, you know, what, what the country is going through today. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. kind of interesting. I know that my brother, who uh, obviously is autistic, um, but he's very well versed in, uh, in historical things and, uh, Pretty much a Jeopardy whiz, you know, kind of. Yeah. Um, do you retain facts pretty good? Every now and then I do because, I mean, okay, I am interested in a whole lot of subjects, but, it, but at the same time. So I remember some subjects real good and some, you know, I would have to think real hard how to to try and remember but yeah you know i mean history's always been my forte oh good good 
Now, uh, like I said, I don't want to beat that drum to death, but I, we, we hey, definitely, uh, I'm, a, I'm an open book, so feel yeah, free to ask anything. Right uh, so how, how did uh, you do uh, religiously or you read the Bible or yeah, were you, yeah. were you, were you, did you, how, I know that for me, and I'm, I'm just you know, giving uh, so that we're talking on the same level and you can you know feel comfortable saying whatever you got to say. And you already said that you're open book, so you can repeat yeah. over and over it. I am too. <laughs> uh, I know, notice that whenever I, uh, I struggled, I struggle, even I struggle today, I'm an electrician. I still don't understand uh, what, uh, how to hook up a, a, a power to a welder, whatever. <laughs> I can troubleshoot like a mad dog. You can, there's not uh, even, you know, in the in the in the group of eight electricians, I was they had me uh, go and troubleshoot because I could do it like the, there was no other uh, mm -hmm. world for me. Uh, but you know, there's some things in electrical that I just don't understand. But I understand electrical theory uh, really well. But it, um, whenever it comes to reading normal books and stuff like that i i there's some comprehension problems there sometimes but reading the bible or the book of mormon especially it really speaks my language if you can understand what i'm saying yeah as a, as a matter of fact okay when i was a baptist you know i mean okay when i was a catholic i did not read the bible Pretty much, you know, because in cat, because okay, going to a, a Catholic church, you know, they give you the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Gospel, and that's like your Bible for the week. During you see, during during the week, I had not read the Bible. Now, when I was a Baptist, you know, I studied. So, when were you, know, you a Bap When were you a Baptist? What age were, are you at this time? I was, I want to say I was just turning, or just after my my thirteenth birthday, around around March or April of eighty seven. Okay. Yeah. And how yeah, long because, did you stay a Baptist? Uh, I stayed a Baptist until about ninety four, ninety five, somewhere in that area. So that's about eight years or so. Is that yeah. Okay. So you were Baptist. So it's not like you were just flying into one religion. No, or another. no, no, no. So from the age of 14 to about age of 23 or four, you were. Yeah. Baptist? Yeah. Some, some the, somewhere in that area. Now, now a friend of mine at, at the Baptist church had, had taught kids in in the missions, you know, in in the housing projects. They would instead of bringing the kids to a church building, they would bring the, the what's inside the church building to the kids. You know, they would bring Jesus to the kids. So I would help him out about about one or two Sundays a month. Some sometimes he, he sometimes four four Sundays a month. You know, I would go out there and I would help him and. These kids range from two years old up to 18, 19 years old. Okay. Yeah, so I would help them out. And, yeah, so I would help help him out. And I enjoyed that. Then, then that group closed and, you know, and and I stopped going to the back. To, to the Baptist church a lot, you know, because I was helping my friend out. Right. So then I, so another friend of mine had, had taken me to a non-denominational church and I had, had gone there and was about, say about six months there, you know, you know, because life had got, you know, a couple of life circumstances, which I won't get into very Right now, at, at this moment, but by the way, when I was a Baptist, I actually wanted to be a minister, you know, go into the ministry, lead a church at that time. So, 
So when I was a Baptist, that was when I really, you know, started getting into and studying the Bible. Okay. And which was my question. <laughs> yeah, sorry so you, about that. So you were no, you're fine, you're fine. Uh yeah. so you were uh you were uh looking to become a minister in the Baptist church. Yeah. And that means that you were dedicating your life more so to theology at that time than you or the Bible than than uh 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 any than prior to that you'd yeah, you that's, said, this yeah is, that's about th yeah that's about so right. prior to that it was like I'm just here but yeah. this, this church kind of compelled you to say well I want to do this and I want to become a minister so I better learn my my scriptures yeah you know, right? yeah now interestingly enough okay one of the reasons why I wanted to be a minister is because okay there's a there was a a minister named David Ring. He had cerebral palsy. And I I watched him on Jerry Falwell and I had gone to one of his meetings down in in Fort Myers. He had a a quote which stuck with me. It was Second Corinthians chapter twelve verses 7 through 10, where, where Paul had the throne in his sight above it from Satan, and he pleaded with God three times to remove it. God said in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul said, therefore, therefore will I glorify, therefore will I glorify in pain, in weaknesses, in sufferings. But when I am weak, then I, then am I strong? Yeah, that's a that's a wonderful. Uh, we all need uh, uh, the ability to have hope in our lives, or to, yeah, to, uh, or to see somebody who has um, uh, uh, surpassed all uh, doubts. From his the audience, meaning that uh, you might have this recognized infirmity, whether it be Paul's uh, uh, blindness in one eye, your your uh, Mike. What was the the uh, cerebral palsy? Yeah, well, I know that, but what was your pastor's the pastor's name that you? David Ring. David Ring. Yeah. Another uh, somebody who becomes a hero to you. Oh, Paul yeah. becomes a hero to us. Peter becomes a hero. Jesus Christ, of course, the yeah, of all mean. heroes. But they all, you know, many of these people, we could say that they had some some disabilities in their life that uh, that we can uh, look at and say they overcame. They overcame. Yeah, I can well, overcome. Yeah. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I think I had read somewhere that Joseph Smith had had a problem with his leg one time. Yeah, he had typhoid or uh, yeah, was it typhoid fever? I Which, think, uh, yeah, I he think uh, so. his leg was cut open by the doctor, yeah. and they scraped the bone, and he was like eight years old, and yeah. he didn't take liquor or anything like that, and you're like, I just just put a knife in my heart. I'm better off. Don't right. even, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? I, I'm exactly. sorry. I, I don't think I, you know, but the, you know, I, and it was kind of interesting that when people go through traumatic situations like that, there becomes, and his mother did too. She went through a, uh, a traumatic situation in her life. Hmm. Uh, I think it's a near death, but I can't remember. But when you go through those traumatic situations, there becomes a, a sensitivity to the spirit. Yeah, you know more so than uh, than your normal human beings. And uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I th I think I had read somewhere that if if one of your senses doesn't work, you know the other senses yeah. double their their efforts. I I think that's what right, I said. Right, right. Sure Somebody who's blind can hear uh, in uh, uh, quite well or yeah. better than most or whatever that looks like. Now, I wanted to ask uh, something that's on my mind socially. Okay. Obviously, you're, 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 you people notice that you have 
some some things that you're not capable uh, or uh, not at what what people would call normal level. Yeah. Okay. Uh, socially in high uh, in school uh, versus socially in the different denominations you were uh, uh, living. How how do you interact and how do people treat you? How do you treat others? In, in various situations, yeah. Uh, okay. Did you have to? Did you have to duke it up and, and fight sometimes, or did you have to? Or did people uh, <laughs> treat you quite uh, uh, reasonably? A little of both, as a matter of fact. And I'll tell you this one story. Okay, when I was in fifth grade, I I had almost come to blows with with somebody on the playground because okay, we were so we were so we were playing softball my class versus another class and somebody in my class had, had struck out then a play later there was a bad call so I got up and I went out and I confronted and I'm like you know that that wasn't a good call the other class said, said it was so I went back there was somebody sitting in my you know somebody sitting where I was and he's like no go to the back line I'm like excuse me I was sitting there he pushed me down, not only my class, but the other class all converged on this guy. Oh. And him, yeah. And and then in sixth grade, you know, okay, there was another kid who had a who had a disability and there was somebody who would pick on him. I stood up for him. I stood up okay, I stood up to him when I when I got off, when I got off the bus and went to to set my stuff down at school, somebody hit me in in the back. I turned around, and I mean, I I literally clocked them. We went to the ground. <laughs> now, oh, okay, as as you can tell by my, you know, I am a, yeah, I no no no, I am a huge man. Okay. Oh, I, that's good. I've always been big. As a matter of fact, when I was in sixth grade, I weighed 160 pounds. Oh wow! Uh, how tall? Yeah. Are you? I'm five seven. Oh okay. So you got yeah. some, you got some mass behind you. Actually, true story. If it were for, if it were not for my disability, I would have been a football player as well. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I bet. And anyway, so a a whole crowd encircled us, and I just lay. I just rolled over, laid on the guy's legs. And so the teachers had to pull us apart. But anyway, my mom had said that because I'm disabled, you know, I'm drawn to other people with disabilities, you know, to like try and help them out or whatnot, you know. So that's kind of like, and okay, earlier, earlier you had said that that guy gives us certain gifts. Yeah, I'm thinking that that is one of the gifts that I have is that I, that I as a disabled person am drawn to other people who have disabilities. And I agree with that. Uh, it was kind of I just met this uh, new mechanic that they had hired. And uh, finally, just a couple of days ago, we were uh, jawing back and forth. And he starts telling me some very intimate spiritual things about he says, I have no idea why I'm even talking to you about these things. These are so personal. And there is, there is, I said this because people are drawn into that conversation with me because that's where I'm, you know, I didn't say it this way, but that's where I'm at. Yeah. And if I'm there and I have <clears throat> enough presence, then people will be drawn into that conversation naturally and like you said people are drawn into you because you have a uniqueness uh about yourself that is uh that helps other people uh uh, uh entertain the thought or even have the hope that yeah. they, can, they can overcome things in their life too yeah as and a matter of we fact need, we need each other we yeah. need each other to really build one another up yeah and and, and I mean, okay, when I was in high school, I was involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes organization. Now, granted, I'm not an now granted, I'm not an an athlete, but you you know, I was 
that was like the premier Christian organization at the time. And a couple of people from that group had said that they know when I'm coming because I always had a smile on my face. I mean, I could be clear across the the school campus and somebody would know that I'm coming because they could sense the smile on my face. Yeah. Yeah, because people that, again, when we're connected spiritually, we we bring about a uh, a presence a, a greater presence with us and then it and then that that uh, uh is amplified to whatever degree that be yeah and so with that it really uh because <laughs> i don't know i mean i'll creep up on people not creep up on them but i'll be i'll just walk up to people and they'll turn around like where you come from so I don't know yeah, if I'm and, just empty inside or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But uh, actually, I I know how that is because there've been a couple of times in which, like, okay, my okay, I, I live full disclosure. I live with my mom now. I'm 48 years old. I live with my mom, my sister, my brother-in-law, and my niece. Just an hour out, just an hour west of DC. Okay. And. and and about, I want to say, 20 to 30 minutes north of Dallas Airport. Anyway, so there, so there, so, okay, whenever I wear shoes, I'm always, you know, clomping around because, okay, I would always jo joke with my mom that I don't have house shoes, I have horse, horse shoes. <laughs> anyway, but yes. Yeah, so, Not being so, just hooves. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, however, there, there was one time that I did not wear shoes and just wore socks, and I came up, and my mom turned around and somebody says, "Oh, you scared me. Where, where's the clump, clump, clump?" And I'm like, "Well, I don't, have, well, I don't have, have my shoes on. So whenever, so whenever I don't wear shoes, I'm like a ninja. Whenever I do wear shoes, I'm like a horse." <laughs> You, uh, and, and let's uh, <laughs> we've had so many insights on uh, Rick Below, and this is uh, a Latter Day Saint on Fire uh, uh, YouTube channel, and he is just a wonderful uh, 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 storyteller. Uh, we had, uh, again we're we're look, looking to the eyes of somebody who was diagnosed at least uh, to, uh, uh, initially with cerebral palsy. And uh, we um, are really getting uh, to know Rick too, uh, and, and he's describing some of his um, uh, uh, social interactions, his mental acuity, and things like that, and how he's been able to adjust in uh, certain lifestyles. He, been, he uh, was first born in Catholicism, took communion. He uh, joined the Baptist church for a while, for about up to the, about the age of, you said you uh, started Jehovah's Witness about 23, is that right? No, I was a Jehovah's Witness, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, around, around 96, well, uh, around 97, right. 1997, so I was about 20, so I was about 22 because my birthday's in 22. December. 22, okay, 22, yeah. okay. Yeah, and my also, birthday, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I just want to get one more. What was that other church you were talking about? That Swedenborgian. Swedenborgian. And, uh, and so, anyway, I'm just kind of reviewing everything so that people that might be lost into the stories that we've been okay. telling, that we can get back yeah. to, the, to the point of our conversation, which is your conversion story. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we need to know about Rick uh, also mm -hmm. and, uh, and know uh, how he gets to eventually becoming a, a, a Latter-day Saint. So anyway, so uh, let's go to um, uh, you, you, you met the female missionaries. Yeah. Was that while you were uh, a Baptist or Jehovah's Witness? Do, okay. I had left the Jehovah's Witnesses around 1998 because okay. I started feeling, you know, I, I mean, I started feeling the, what drew you into the Jehovah's Witnesses first? That's what I'd like to know. Okay, 
Okay, so when I was a Baptist, you know, they would always come around to the door, not knock on the door, and, and I would have a conversation with them. And then, true story, okay, I started debating with them about the Trinity, you know, because Jehovah's Witnesses don't don't believe in the Trinity, and they don't believe that Jesus is God. You know, they, they believe that he is the Son of God, but they don't believe that, you know, he is, he is as Baptists would say, God the Son. Right. So... I mean, okay, I would have four Bibles. I would have a couple of books, you know, about cults and Jehovah's Witnesses were in there. So, I, I mean, okay, my sister used to play the piano. So I would come into her bench and I would have like two Bibles set up plus a whole lot of anti-Jehovah's Witness material. Ooh. Now, this is when I was a Baptist. Then, eh, so I would engage with them and then in 97 you know i had i was going through a, a bad time so so i so so one of the so one of the witnesses came around and like hey you want to bible so i was like ah, sure you know because i you know because there was something missing in my life mm. so yeah. then you yeah. know i was I'm sorry, I, I have to go back just for a second because I lost okay. something there. Sorry about uh, that. And, and uh, uh, we, I asked you how you were doing socially in school. Now in these religious, different religious uh, 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 um, entity or uh, sex that you're going to, were you treated differently or uh, did you feel like you were on the outside looking, or they, uh, it was a kumbaya embrace, even in the Baptist church, huh. the whole witness church, and then the, uh, the Swedish. Okay. 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 So Baptist, you know, okay. I was involved in two Baptist churches. Well, three, if you count the, count the spirit in the person. Okay. The pastor at the first Baptist church, was more concerned with how I was spending my Sundays, you know, staying at home watching football, rather than where I was going, you know, because he kept twisting my arm and like, you know, come to church, come to church. So I was like, okay, okay. Then that church broke up because some of the people did, didn't like what, what the pastor was saying. I happened to like the pastor at the time. So that church kind of split off, and the pastor and a few people and a few families started that started that church. Then my sister was involved in Girl Scouts. I have a si I have a sister who's seven years younger than I am. Okay. And she, and we would always go to a go to a neighbor's house, and we would have like a Bible study, and they were like. Where's your sister? So I told him that that she was at Girl Scouts. The pastor said that the Girl Scouts was a satanic organization. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I so I went home. And this is back in 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 the eighties. This was this was I, I want I want to say about ninety. Well, yeah. This happened uh, way before any controversy come up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I want to. Yeah, I want to say this was around eighty nine or ninety. Yeah, it it sounds like you were embraced by by this uh, religious sect. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. It was, it, and they. Uh, it wasn't like uh, school and stuff like that where people were waiting to. You know. I, I don't well, think... well. Now, to be fair, okay, elementary school. And sometimes in middle school, you know, I, I, I was picked up because of my disability. You know, people would call me retarded right. and whatnot. Now, what I did not mention is in high school, you know, I mean, I was popular, but not popular. You know, like, okay, in pep rallies, I would, in pep rallies, I would be on the floor dancing and people would be like, and people would smile and they'd be like, go Rick, go Rick. And when, and. Okay, in in the hallways, you know, I be before the football team would would play. I would always high five them and say, "Hey, 
good luck in your game. And if they would win, I would say congratulations on your win. If they would lose, I, I, I'd be like, sorry you lost, you know, better luck next time. Yeah. So high school, I was kind of popular, but not popular. Yeah. As a, as a matter of fact, and I, I don't have it with me, but when I was in, I want to say 11th grade, the, the high school newspaper did an article on me. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. So That's high school, wonderful. I was kind of, yeah. So high school, like I said, you know, I was popular, you know, people, People like me. Yeah. And then, and, and, and then you, so that's wonderful that people, you know, eventually mature enough yeah. to you know, appreciate Rick, you know, uh, even more so. And I think uh, there's a good reason for that now. And then the Baptist church, you felt welcome there. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so especially in the third Baptist church that I had gone to after the, after I had left, the other pastor, because he called it the, the Girl right. Scouts of Satanic Organization. <laughs> it's just so uh, yeah. yeah. Girl Scouts so of I'm, Satanic Organization. Yeah. That's funny. yeah. So I went to another Baptist church, and I mean, I felt popular there. As a matter of fact, the okay, the person who who had gone to who who had gone to the housing projects to to, to preach to the kids, he was at that third Baptist church. He was my youth sponsor and discipleship partner, so we would get together every week and have a Bible study as well. So, so the the, the conclusion on the at least in the Baptist Church, there was uh, somebody calling the Girl Scouts Satanic organization. <laughs> Mostly, you had a, a very uh, a genuine uh, uh, relationship with a lot of people in these churches. Yeah. So you weren't you weren't looking for socialization you weren't you weren't being treated as an outcast in high school no. or in grade school you, normal things happen to rick i just had to read your name that's how bad i am with, my yeah. rick. <laughs> with rick and uh so you were just almost as uh you were nor a normal kid going through school in these churches nobody was making you feel like an outcast no so and uh, so now we get to uh, I, I want to get back. So the Joel witnesses are uh, 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 entertaining at best. You've got yeah, they're they're uh, they're anti Jehovah Witnesses on one part of the piano, and then you have the Bibles on the other side of the piano, and you're studying through this because they're bringing up the the fallacies of what you would call. Uh, uh, the the alternative ideas from the Trinity to what they're teaching about the yeah. nature of God. Yeah, as a matter of fact, okay, I would have a milk crate next to me full of full of other books and stuff as well. Yeah, so and then then in, then in then about ninety six, you know, I had hit a rough patch, you know, with, with a couple of roommates because I had moved out of my mom's house. Has three roommates, and you know, it kind of a rough patch. So I, yeah. so I was like at, I mean, I mean, I was literally like at rock bottom. Yeah. And then, then, then when one of the, then when the, the Jehovah's Witnesses came by again, you know, that that's when I, you know, I was like, okay, sure, why not? So then I started going with them, and and. And I was with them for for eighteen months. I would go out and I would, you know, m you know, go to go door to door witnessing. And on the inside, I kind of felt, you know, I'm tr trying to think of of the right word, not disheveled, but I mean, I kind of, I kind of felt empty so to speak yeah you know so i understand what you're saying yeah so the so then around 1998 you know i was yeah around middle of, of 98 to 99 you know i started drifting away from them now now they would try and draw me back but then but i was like nah so so it so from so from from 2000 and then a, then, 
then of course nine nine eleven world well, right now. Before I met the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, I considered myself spiritual as well. Right. You know. You know. And at the time, you know, my affiliations were not with with anyone. You know, like I read the Bible. You know, I would pray. You know, so so I consider myself spiritual without any affiliations or leanings toward any particular thing. And you're about 20, 27 at this time, or yeah, 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 about yeah, yeah, about twenty six, twenty seven years. Okay, yeah, about twenty, yeah, somewhere, somewhere in my late twenties. Oh, okay, okay, and you're feeling so. First, you hit rock bottom. You felt like. And then the Jehovahs came and they and they took you out of that dis, dis, disparate, uh, yeah, desperate moment of your life. They uh, give you a, a point of direction, mm -hmm. and you joined up with them, and and now, but you're still feeling this emptiness that there's there there's something missing. Within, yeah, you know, did you did you even entertain the idea of going back to, uh, uh. The, the Baptist, uh, the Baptist church, or that other church that I keep on forgetting. Well, not okay. Mainly, it was Baptist and non-denominational. You know, the Swedenborgians. I mean, okay. I mean, there was something a little hinky about it, and and I had only gone to like two or three services, so I was like, no more. <laughs> so, but anyway, but <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so basically it was either Baptist or one non-denominational at that time, and you know things things just wouldn't you know fall into place, you know. So like I said, you know, like I would read the Bible, you know, every now and then I would catch, you know, one of the ministers on on TV or on the radio, and you know just read the bible that way now keep in mind you know this is way before the internet right yeah so and, oh, and what, like yeah what i think the internet comes out in about 94 or something like that yeah or, yeah because it's, I, it's not why it's not something that's available to everybody and, no as a as a matter of fact 1994 i was going to a community college that was my first interaction with the internet and I would join, you know, one of the Christian chat rooms and, you know, just talk with, you know, just talk, talk with them in there. Right. You know, you know, so through interaction through email. Yeah. Okay. Email, yeah. Email chat, a couple of them I would talk to on the telephone. Right. You know, so I had, you know, that spiritual connection. And you were exposed to different ideas. Yeah. Okay. And so as you're going through the Jehovah Witnesses uh, experience, uh, you said that you felt empty. Now, yeah. I believe Simply, while, you're, while you're in that uh, uh, organization, that sect, you said that you'd met a couple of missionaries, or has that come before? This was way after. Okay. 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 One of the reasons why I felt a little discombobulated there is because okay, the the Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate any holidays. They don't honor birth dates. You know, they don't even vote. So, so basically, it was the holidays and birth dates that they were like, no way. Because okay, growing up Catholic, Baptist, you know. Christmas not, not was, yeah, Christmas was always a big deal. Yeah. You know, birth dates, even though some people, even though they said, you know, birth dates, just another day, you know, you, you know, you would celebrate birth dates because <clears throat> it was God giving you an, another year of life. Right. You know, so, so, be, so because they didn't celebrate Christmas or Actually, basically any holidays. I, I mean, not even Thanksgiving. They wouldn't celebrate. Wow. I mean, yeah. And that's important. I I love that. I I love that phrase. When we celebrate birthday, and it's going to now I understand <laughs> more intimately that, that we should be celebrating that 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 mark in history every year 
saying God gave this to us. Actually, you know what? Yes, crazy over the top genius. And now I appreciate my own birthday and others that more than that. Uh, just gonna... that just occurred to me. Yeah. Just now that just now that occurred to me. That goes to show, you know, how you know, just how much I appreciate God. Yeah. You know, you know, because I'm I mean, I didn't even think about it until just a few seconds ago because it's like, you know what? That's true. I mean, birthdays are basically another year that God has given you on the earth. Yeah. You know, because one of one one of the things that I had learned as a Baptist is that God God can you know God can take you home at any time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so so basically birthday is just another year of thanking God that you've lived this long. Exactly. And especially when when we have some uh, so many uh in your case uh, the cerebral palsy or whatever that looks like now considering what doctors are saying uh or anybody or even myself thinking about all the people that I've lost in my life and but how much time I was able to celebrate each year with yeah. to uh recognize hey I had another year with this is another you know, pinnacle in my life that God gave me one more year with them exactly I love that yeah. I love that oh yeah so now so when uh so now that you're like not really uh, uh gravitated to Jehovah's Witnesses anymore because of the things that they don't celebrate and the civic uh duty that you feel like you should have in voting and stuff like that I imagine mm-hmm. what is that true the civic duties you know the, you said that you love civics and that it seems like you're uh sound like a patriot too to oh know, yeah it, as a matter of fact, I'm involved with the with an, an organization called the Convention of States Project, which uses Article Five of the Constitution. Okay, there are two ways to amend the Constitution. One way, as has happened twenty seven times, is two thirds of both houses of Congress propose an amendment and it's sent to the states, where three fourths of the states have to say yes in order for it to be a part of the Constitution. Right. That's the first method. The second method, and the method that nobody re- realizes, is it says on the application of two-thirds of, of the states, Congress must call for a convention for proposing amendments. Well, okay. So the and, states can, can push an amendment or... Congress itself. No, 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 no. Then, then I'm wrong. And see, I lo- okay. got lost there. Okay, they the call. Okay, they call for a. Okay, F, okay. Who's calling? Who's calling? Congress call. Okay, if yeah. before, if two thirds of the state legislatures right agree, then Congress must call for a convention for proposing amendments. Okay, and you can go to and it, if. If you don't mind the shameless plug, you can go to www.conventionofstates.com and look at the petition and basically sign the petition, which goes to your state legislator, okay. who represents you in your state capital. Then, okay, so far right now, there are 19 states that have officially signed on to the convention. There was a 20th state, Kansas, that had passed it, but there's a clause in the Kansas state constitution which says that two thirds of the legislature must approve, you know, must must say yes in order in order to be a part of the convention. Right, right. But, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, can you, can you, uh, there's a lot of great information he's talking about. I'm going to try to link that uh, website because it's important for us to know our rights and the laws of the country. What was that web, uh, that web page again? www.conventionofstates.com. And I will definitely link that to this video uh, because being a uh, good Latter-day Saint is 
be civil, civically minded too, because if they change the laws of the land that inhibit us to uh, worship uh, freely, then where 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 do we go? Yeah, Guess well, we're find our own well, <laughs> yeah. well, we already got pushed out of the United States once to <laughs> Utah. I guess the next thing is go yeah. find this unchar uncharted <laughs> island. And <laughs> Actually, interestingly enough, the Convention of States has, you, you know, once want a convention for three subject areas, fiscal restraints on the federal government, limit the size and scope of the federal government, and impose term limits on federal officials. So, you know, your right to religion, your... You know, your First Amendment, your Second Amendment are safe yeah. with this convention because they're not going to handle it because, unless, of course, you tell me where freedom of religion falls under term limits, limit the size and scope of, of the federal government, or impose fiscal restraints on the federal government. Wow. So let's get back to... Uh... To your conversion story, we, yeah, we all—I yeah. mean, both yeah, of us. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry know, about this, but oh, hey, you're you fine. Know. No, this is this is a story about Rick Below, Bulo, 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 Bulo. Yeah, I, uh, it's not a story. Of, it's not. It's not going to go conventionally. Uh, 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 it's not a conventional. Uh, it's a story about Rick. Yeah, and, uh, and we, yeah. Actually, one thing is okay. I always say, just think of the murderer, Klaus. Von Bulo, but no, I am not related to him. <laughs> so anyway, Dal, I want uh, let's let's get back. So he's feeling empty about the Jehovah Witnesses based on no celebrating any of the holidays, birthday. Uh, we uh, it's the civic it seems like he's civically minded. He likes being in politics and stuff like that, which that would have been a, a way to. Uh, uh, promote that emptiness within him. Now, what does Rick do with this thing going on in uh, in his heart and his mind about this emptiness? And how? Uh, what is his next move? I want to know. Okay, so I was writing. Okay, so I I had a friend who who was a public bus driver. It in the Fort Myers area, which is where I lived. And I would always ride the bus with them, you know, talk with them, talk with a couple of passengers that I had, that I was friends with. And so, so the bus stopped at, at one of the transfer points. Two ladies got on the bus, said right what, across What year is this, please? This was, I want to say around 2002, 2003. Okay, so, okay. All yeah. right. So this is, yeah. and are you Jehovah Witness at this time? No, no. So you stop being yeah. Jehovah Witness and just yeah. become a spiritual uh, uh, human. And, yeah. Okay. So you're, are you searching for a church at this time? Or are you actually, to... actually, believe me, actually, I was not searching for for anything. You know, okay. because you know, okay, my then stepdad at the time, you know, he, he did. He was not affiliated with any church, you know. I mean, okay, he he would read the Bible and and religious books. So so he was so he considered himself spiritual. Now now I lived on the same lot as my mom and and then stepdad or her at the time, but I was living in a separate housing facility, you know, like a like like a camper trailer. Right. Right. So, you know, like I, I would come and go and like I would visit them and, you know, they would come up, visit me and whatnot. So I, you know, just church, church was like beyond me. Right. right. Uh, yeah. So, so like I said, you know, the two ladies came on and there was somebody else who came on the bus. They talked with him. He got off the bus, and what drew me, like I said earlier, was the name tags. So I was so, and like I said, I was sitting, sitting, singing across from them. I looked over and I just squinted. You know, are you sure it wasn't the girl? The fact that they're females and maybe attractive. 
maybe, maybe not, but <laughs> but yeah, so so then I hit us the name tag the, did draw you into that exactly. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, the name tag kind of kind of got got me curious because as okay, Jehovah's Witnesses didn't have have any name tags. You know, but then again, of course, because you know, if you go out, you know, your neighbors know you. Whereas with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, you know, they have missionaries coming from anywhere in in the world. Yeah, you know, you know, to that specific lo location. So I got to talking with them, and you know, we had. And I told him, you know, that I read the Bible. As a matter of fact, I think I did have a Bible with me. I'm not, I don't remember at the time, but I think I had a Bible with me at the time. And they handed me a Book of Mormon and I read it and I was like, this is interesting. You read, you, did you read through the Book of Mormon as far as the chapters they give you? Or did you actually read the whole thing? I did. I just bounced around. Oh, okay, okay. So you're reading through it, basically. Yeah. Not, 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 uh, and uh, not cover to cover, yeah. like they had said, but you know, like certain things. And okay, one of one of the things in that I would do is like, okay, I would look at a footnote, and 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 it would, and it would lead me to another place you know so i was so i was basically going down a, a few rabbit holes because of of the footnotes okay and so i had gone through the through the lessons with them at the time i would meet at another person's house you know because my mom and stepdad were like you know no nobody can come over you know for one reason or another, so so they said nobody could come over. So I would, you know, tell tell them, you know, hey, can we meet at can we meet at like a Kmart or a, or a shopping center? Then and then then they would have somebody drive me to a member's house, and we would have have the meetings there. Okay. And you're 28 at this time, or yeah, about that. Okay, yeah. So you're very aware of uh, uh, of the different options you have in life. It's not like you've been, you know, uh, 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 not uh, you. If you've been in some kind of closet, you know, you're very aware of the options that you have. And now these missionaries are saying, "Here's another option." Yeah, as and a matter of pain by it, at least. Yeah, as a matter of fact, one of okay, one of the good thing, one of the good qualities of Jehovah's Witnesses is that you know they would refer to the to the Bible even even though you know they had their own translation, right? Irregardless, it was the Bible, so I would you know you, you know just pour into the Bible a little bit more. Then, then when I found the Book of Mormon, you know and and it said another testament of Jesus Christ, you know, the missionaries said that the Book of Mormon complements the Bible. So a couple of times, you know, like I would have the Bible open on one side, the Book of Mormon in the other end. In the Book of Mormon, you know how they have like, you know, compare Isaiah or compare Matthew. Right. You know, you know, I would open to that particular section and look at it and it's like, you know, this does, you know, this does jibe, so to speak, with with what the Bible says. Uh, and I got a question. Uh, how what 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 would you say on a scale of one to ten were you uh, versed in the Bible at this time? Ten plus. You were that animate about. Yeah, you were into it, huh? Yes, so, I, mean, I mean, well, well, going back, okay. Based on my, <laughs> based on, based on my engagements with the Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, when I was a Baptist, right? You know, going to the housing projects with a friend of mine, right? Going to a couple of non-denominational churches, you know. 
studying with and becoming a Jehovah's Witness, you know, I was grounded in the Bible. You so know, you hey, felt like you were above and beyond capable of discerning whether this Book of Mormon would would be uh, 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 God's word or not. Is that right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, okay. When I okay, fast forward. I'm gonna fast forward. Uh, yeah, a, a, a little bit, then come back. Okay. In 2017, Hurricane Irma hit the Fort Myers area, and I were and I had hunkered down with 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 my mom and stepdad, and I started and I watched the October General Conference, and that got me drawn to to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints a little bit more. Now, when my mom found out that I was studying with the church. With with the Latter Day Saints, she was like, "I don't like it," and I'm like, "Mom, maybe I can teach them a thing or two. <laughs> little, little, little did I, you know, because I, know. <laughs> because I was that versed in the Bible. So this is 2017, is that right? Or yeah, yeah, you, uh, so yeah. You and, have, you're not you haven't become a member from uh, the age of 28 up to the age of 40. Three or so? No, yeah, 42? yeah, yeah. Forty two. Oh, you, no. you okay? Yeah. Now, yeah, and now, now, let me go back. Okay. And, I, and don't don't quote me on those uh, ber- dates or those uh, timelines yeah. because yeah. this is Rick's story, not mine. So he'll have to fill. Yeah, it yeah, gap. that's about right. But <laughs> anyway, so going back, okay. Like I said earlier, you know, I I took the lessons. And I was about to be baptized, but life got his way. This is now, 29 or 28 or something like that? Yeah, yeah, around 2003. 2003. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I think it was around July of 2003. So, uh, so, I, so I would have been 28. Okay. Any, anyway, 2004 came around. Hurricane Charlie. I don't know if you're familiar with... With, with with Hurricane Charlie, are you or you remember hearing about Hurricane Charlie? No, no, I don't remember that one. Okay, so I lived in Fort and Myers, in Florida. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, in in Florida. So I was living in, in North Fort Myers, Florida. Hurricane Charlie hit twenty miles to the north of where I lived. Okay. And Hurricane Charlie was. Charlie, yeah, yeah, Charlie. yeah, 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 right? yeah, Hurricane Charlie. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. I remember. Yeah, there was another. Hur- yeah, there were two more hurricanes that 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 I'll get to, and I referenced one of them, Hurricane Irma, back in 2017, which is what brought me back to the Latter Day Saints. I'll get to that in a minute. Right, right. But anyway, so 2004, you know, okay, we were without power for seven days after Hurricane Charlie hit. I was hurt, so I was basically hunkered in my room, or 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 rather in 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 the trailer, nowhere to go. I had sprained my back. So so the next time, uh, so the next time, Florida w- was threatened by hurricanes. My then stepdad said, "We we are evacuating to Chattanooga, Tennessee." We wound up staying. In, in a hotel in Cartersville, Georgia, an hour north uh, of Atlanta. He had, he had gone into the hospital for congestive heart failure. Mm-hmm. So so I was at, at the hotel. No weight room, no game room. Pool was closed. Can you take a guess at, 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 as to where I spend a good majority of my time? Really? Can you take a guess? In the in the motel room, my legs started swelling. Oh, yeah, because I couldn't walk around. Because mm-hmm. number one, there was no place for me to, to get to because there was no weight room, no game room. Pool was closed. Okay. And number two, it didn't help matters. It did not help matters any that I had a bad back. Right. Right. Yeah. So my legs started swelling, and they started breaking out. Now. 
December 29th, 2004, a day before my birthday, yes, my birthday is December 30th, five days after Christmas, two days before New Year. I, I always make a joke and say, that, and say that my mom calls me her tax deduction because I made it in the nick of time. <laughs> happy, 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 happy oh, December 30th, how close can you get yeah, exactly. to the New Year? Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, so he died. Now, January, February, 2005, my mom noticed that my legs were swollen and breaking out. Right. So I went to, so, so I went to the wound care center. They patched me up and I went there about a few months and they patched me up, you know, over, wrapped the leg up and the leg started, you know, getting better. Good. However, you know, so and and it, it was around 2005 that I really, you know, started getting back to the internet. Okay. Now, now at the time, I w okay, I consider myself spiritual, but my but 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 my religious affiliation was more toward the Latter Day was was more toward the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Right. That's where my re religious affiliation or or religious mindset fell under. Okay. Now at the time, okay, I wasn't really looking to get involved with them as of yet. You know, because life was, you know, because life still got in the way and everything. So I. So I I gone through so okay like I would I would pick up the Bible I would I would pick up the Book of Mormon and I or at the time I had the the triple combo of the Book of Mormon Doctrine and Covenants and Pearl of Great Price right right so I would read them you know you know like a little bit here and there so my so my spirituality you know was just like a little bit kind of like going back to earlier. You know that I had street knowledge, but not, you know, kind of like someone, kind of like someone having street knowledge, but not book knowledge, or vice versa. Right. Now, fast forward, two thousand seventeen, early, around August to early September, Hurricane Irma threatened Florida. I sent a text to my mom asking her. What am I going to do for Hurricane Irma? She said, now, now by this time, my mom had gotten remarried. She said, you are hunkering down with me. Sis, this being my then stepdad's sister, was also hunkering down with us. Then Hurricane Irma hit. You know, we were hunkered in. Then a week after Hurricane Irma, my stepdad invited me, or or rather, voluntold me, saying, "You're moving in with us because I because at the time I was un undergoing a bad a bad roommate situation because I had a family move in with me and yeah you know they started okay the man of the man of the family there. Said that he treated me l like a brother, yet he emotionally abused me. You know, you know, you know, like okay, there were certain things that I would do, and and he'd be like, no, don't do that. Like okay, a couple of times I wanted to to actually go to bed early, and he's like, no, don't go, no, don't go to bed early. Stay up with me, and I was like, okay, you know, kind of humoring him, so to speak. Yeah. So then, so so basically, my mom and stepdad got me out of that bad situation. I would right. always joke because, okay, I would visit my mom because at the time I was going to a podiatrist because my legs started swelling up again. Yeah. So I would, so so I so I would, so my mom would take me to the podiatrist, and I would spend, you know, like half the day with with my mom. I had a few ideas in my mind. That I wanted, that I wanted to, to do to do because okay, I I have a website, rickbulow.com. That's all one word, www.rickbulow.com. 
And I would that too. Yeah, and I would work on on my website at the time. And is this I, website still uh, going or Yes it is. Okay. And as a matter of fact, okay, on there in the civic section, I have a convention of states subsection and you can find all 19 states at the moment that had that that had agreed to the convention of states application okay. on there including the including the state legislatures you know voting history on there okay good good yeah i'll share it with you afterward yeah and I'll, and, and I'll drop the links in, in your facebook afterward thank you thank you welcome anyway so, so you're going to move back in with your uh, stepdad and your mom and you yeah. said, and, and and what's you it seems like uh there's a there's something that keeps on coming up military bases you were always close to military bases is that right no okay no but it just seemed like it was there but no 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 again and, i get lost in yeah in, in the fun yeah. so yeah and Anyway, so so you have no affiliation with military, is that right? No, none of your parents. Well, or... okay, my dad was in the navy. Okay, and actually, in 1993, I wanted to go into the military, and I told him, and I told, you know, okay, I called the navy re recruitment office, wanting information, told them I'm disabled, and they're like, oh, you can't be in the military. So if it were for if it were not for my disability, I might have gone into the military. Yeah, and but your dad was to, in the military in the navy. Yeah, yes, he was in the navy. As a matter of fact, in two thousand after 2001, I and seeing what the terrorists did to to the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, I was like, I wish I was not disabled because I actually wanted yeah. to go into the military. Wow. I mean, granted, you know, I was old, but you know, you know, I'm like, I don't care. I wanted to go into the military. Yeah. So, but anyway, so my, so, so I, so I moved. So September, you know, I moved in with, with my mom and stepdad. October comes around, you know, a conference. Now I watched the the April twenty. Now I watched. General Conference in April 2017, and I was like, okay, you know, so that kind of started getting me on the track, but the roommates kind of derailed that. Right. So the hurricane, so Hurricane Irma, and moving in with with with, with my mom and stuff that kind of pulled me back in. Oh, okay. And yeah, so I watched General Conference on my cell phone at the time because my computer was back at the trailer. Right. So, my, so after general con, so about a couple of days after general conference, my mom and stepdad went over to the other trailer and got all of my stuff and bought it over. Right. Wow. Anyway, so, so so the first general conference that you watched was in what year? April twenty seventeen. That's the first one you've watched. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. And. Then, then after the then after the October General Conference, I downloaded the Gospel Library, and I read the Book of Mormon. You know more through there. Then I was like, "Wow, you know, the, you know, you know, the, me, me, remembering what I had studied in 2003, you know, kind of like God bringing you back, like you know." Kind of, kind of like guy giving you a kick in the pants, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, you see, so, so initially, and okay, I always said that it was a, a hurricane that kind of drew me away, and a and a hurricane that drew me back. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. You know, so <laughs> Hurricane Charlie, twenty o three, or or rather twenty o four. You know, kind you know, made me concentrate more on my legs. Hurricane Irma 2017 brought me back to the to, spiritual side of you. Yeah, 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 the spiritual side and, you know, me coming back and be and and finding God again. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. So, so 2018 rolls around, you know, I'm watching music in the spoken word on, on YouTube, you know, you know, listening to the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square, which by the way, I love them. Yeah. And so, so my mom and stepdad went on a trip. Now at this time, okay. Keep in mind that I had the triple combination a quad, and the Book of Mormon from 2003. Right. And, and okay, I don't know, I, I don't know how long you have your, your, your scriptures, but, you know, after, say, 14 years, you know, you know, they kind of wear down and kind of get ripped up and everything. Yeah. So I asked. If you use them. Yeah. <laughs> True. Or, or if you sleep with them like I did oh, wow. every now and then, yeah. Anyway, so what happened is I had gone to Mormon.org, which is now ComeUnderChrist.org. At least I, 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 I think that's the website now, ComeUnderChrist.org. So, yeah. Anyway, so I... I told them to relabel it a long time ago. I, I didn't tell nobody. <laughs> but, boy, I had... I had uh, uh, even I've got posts on my Facebook back in 2013 says I'm not a Christian I'm a Latter Day Saint or I'm not a Mormon I'm a Latter Day Saint so yeah. I, I've been picking that battle uh, <laughs> pitching that battle all uh, for a long time because yeah uh, uh, like I said but they relabeled and now we got to start a you know now we got to get people on board with that yeah right, so right. You, I'm unto Christ dot org but it was uh, it was Mormon dot org. Mormon dot org. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, so I had asked him, you know, if I could have, and at the time I just asked if I could have a Bible, a triple combo, or a Bible, you know, or a quad. a quad. Yeah, yeah. So, so you you wanted a triple combination, or you wanted to whatever you could get your hands on is basically. It, Exactly, because mine was so old. Plus, you know, with a with the phone, you know, you can't get you know so much on a phone because of how small the screen is. Yeah, I got you. You you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So 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 I was so so the missionaries came over, and we got to talking, and I took the lessons with them, and I was I was baptized. October 14th, 2018, one week after general conference. Wow. Initially, I wanted to be baptized in early January 2019 because I figured, okay, you know, new year, new person. Yeah. However, one of the missionaries that, that, that was studying with me said that he was leaving his said that he was coming up toward the end of his mission and he wanted to see me get baptized before he left. Yeah. So so that's why, you know, 2018, a week after general conference. And, well, okay, so when he said that he was leaving, you know, that his mission was coming to an end, I was thinking, you know what? I began this journey after general conference and after the October general conference in 2017, what if a week later or what if a week after general conference 2018 in October, I get baptized, you know, you know, you know, kind of like, you know, book like, ended. yeah, book ended, you know, like learn about the chair. Okay. Watch general conference learn more uh, about the church again go through go through, through through the lessons then get baptized after general a week after general conference yeah you know be, you know so that was complete the there. Yeah, ex exactly so i had a i have a question um you during your studies obviously you're studying the book of mormon dr covenant pearl of great price you're getting involved in this before you before you get baptized. Is that right? Yeah. And you see all the different. Are you getting into 
any of the anti uh, uh, Christ, I call anti Christ anymore, anti Mormon uh, 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 information. Is that coming to you also? Not not at that particular moment. Now my mom, you know, she was like, you know, why are you know, like, why are, are you saying with the man? It was at that time that I was studying that I was like, maybe I could teach them a thing or two. Little, 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 little did I know. And I'll get to this a little later. Okay. Right. So I'm involved with a, with a group, up, up, Uplift Gospel Study on Facebook. And they do, and they do the Come Follow Me lessons you know, from the Come Follow Me book. Now, early, now, earlier, now, early last year, when, when, when we were studying the Old Testament, I had so much knowledge of the Bible, and we were in Genesis at, at the time. One of the members was like, Rick, you should lead a lesson. And another, who, me? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, you know, but then, and she's like, why? Why? You know, you know a lot about the Bible, so why not lead a lesson? So I was like, oh, all right. You know, kind of reluctantly at first. But then, but then, you know, once I started, you know, studying for, for the lesson, and I'm like, okay, you know, how can I teach this? How can I teach that? I kind of grew more comfortable and... So then I then I then I remembered what I told my mom, you know, that I would teach th that maybe I could teach them yeah. the missionaries a thing or two. <laughs> Little did I know how I could be teaching other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of I fact, understand, I understand exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, as a matter of fact, in 2019, February 2019. And forgive me for bouncing around here, but you know, we with this way, but 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 everything kind of ties in together. Twenty nineteen, I gave my first talk, "What the Book of Mormon Means to Me," and in there I share the same conversion story that I'm sharing with you, though on a more condensed scale. Yeah, I would imagine so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, so 2018, okay, so going back, okay, 2018, after the, a couple, about a day after the April General Conference, my mom and stepdad kind of had, like, I guess you would call an intervention, you know, because they felt that I was going down the wrong path with the Latter-day Saints. Wow. <laughs> so, so I basically had what you would call as a, a a faith crisis, you know, because uh, and that that was when I got most of the anti LDS stuff, you know, coming toward me. Right. Wow. Then about a month later, my they were like, "Okay, fine, you know, just do what you want. You do anyway, you know." You know, so so I started going and you, you know getting getting involved in, in getting involved with the church again. You know, you know my particular ward and stake down in Florida again. Right. So this is and, 18 that you're getting all this anti. And this yeah. Is a year basically before you become baptized, is that right? No, I, no after. Oh, you but, okay? You yeah, got because I was after, baptized okay. in seventeen. Oh, so you were baptized in two thousand seventeen? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, see, so we got every once in a while we got to backtrack to so the old man here. Yeah, and uh, make sure he keeps up with Rick. Okay? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like I said, two thousand seventeen April conference. He's watching, uh, his, uh, and the uh, and then two thousand seventeen October is when it like it starts becoming more meaningful to you to start really studying about the latter day saints and then is the or or to commit to baptism is that right yes okay so okay now can you do that again now it's 2016 is that right the first time you no. 2017 yeah 
you know, 2017, I I started le- learning more about the Latter Day Saints again. Right, right. 28, 28, October 2018, a week out, no, I, October 2017. Sorry, sometimes I, I get mixed up. Yeah, time. yeah. So that's why. But I October 20, back a little bit. yeah, October 2017, I I I was baptized. October 2017, you were baptized. Yeah. Okay. April 2018, you know, instead of getting anti LDS, okay, so instead of having the faith. Been, so yeah. you're still a baby in the gospel, and now you're starting to uh, uh, get the anti stuff thrown at you. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Then, then about a month later in 2018, you know, they just basically like threw their hands up and said, fine, you know, do, you know, do what you want. Right. Then. So, and you said you had a faith crisis at that time. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, okay, my mom was, okay, she, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't, she did not go to church because she was, okay, she started going to, to a church on Saturday nights. Right. And so, you know, because she works Sunday morning. She used to be, she used to work for a, a flea market. She was the PA lady and information lady. She got paid to tell people where, where to go, so to speak. Yeah. Anyway, so there was a faith crisis. So the, and my stepdad started going to another church. So, so we were a spiritual or, or basically religious family. Right, right. And you know me going off and joining the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, you know, kind of didn't sit well with them. But they're like, okay, fine, you know, do what you want. Though there were certain times in which you know, you know, it kind of shown afterward that that I'm really serious about this. You know, you know, to the point that. I would, to the point that my mom would drive me to church on her way to work, and and she would also take me to the family home evenings, and you know, every now and then, you know, you know, especially during COVID, and you know, you, you know, the then sister missionaries, because okay, when I started when I started investigating the LDS again. We had elder missionaries. Right. Then, then sometime during COVID, they went from the elder missionaries who served who served my boy to the to sister missionaries. Okay. And I would meet and I would meet with the sister missionaries. You know, in in, in the garage. You know, I would open the garage door and I would have discussions with the sister missionaries because there was a couch. In, in, in in the garage that, that I would sit on. Right. And I would talk with them, you know, you know, they would share spiritual thoughts and everything and stuff like that. So then, you know, 2021 came up to Virginia, visited my sister, brother-in-law and niece, went, 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 went back down. Now, around this time, I heard about the open house for the Washington D.C. temple that was being be, that was being rededicated. reconstructed and rededicated. Right. Full disclosure: up until this time, I had never stepped foot inside a temple. Right. You know we you know because okay, in Florida, in Florida, and in Fort Myers. The nearest temple was the Fort Lauderdale Temple, about three hours away. Right. And, and now, now the members, you know, they would wake up at five, six, you know, like three, four in the morning to get to be at, at, at the temple by eight o'clock. Yeah. You know, and you know, just that long ride would not suit me. Sure. You know, you know, especially since, you know, okay, even though my mom and stepdad approved of me being a Latter-day Saint, they didn't approve of me being a Latter-day Saint, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Been there, been, done that. 
I have yeah. to feel that we're not uh, in favor, but they did because it helped their cause with my great aunt. Yeah. <laughs> Any, yeah. Anyway, so I told my mom, you know, that a, you know, the open house is this date and I'd like to go. And so, so we decided to take a road trip to Virginia and actually, ironically enough, it, it was a year ago to the, to this date, actually to this hour that I was visiting the Washington DC temple open house. Wow. Wow. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you to tell your story to a small channel. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, and it's a wonderful story. Yeah. And anyway, so and okay. Were you and able this, to get your parents in there? Yeah, my well, okay. My mom and and I drove up to, to Virginia. My stepdad came down. My stepdad still stayed in Florida, and I'll get to him in, in a few, but yeah. I'm, yeah, I mean, my si my sister, my brother-in-law, my niece, and my niece is autistic. Oh, okay. So she had, like, a behavioral therapist, you right. know, go with her. Now, yeah, so it was the, the six of us. Now, my brother-in-law, you know, he has a couple of of highly, of highly classified jobs. Okay. You know, he works for a couple of classified agencies. Or, a, a, agencies, yeah. Yeah, so he had a call. So my sister, brother-in-law, or no, so, so my mom, my sister, my niece, my niece's behavioral therapist, and I walked through the temple. And <laughs> there's a story behind that, which I'll get to. Yeah, please, get, whenever you get there. Yeah, 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 which I'll get to later, but okay. So we went in, and now I had gone through a temple prep class, you know, before COVID. So, you know, like I wanted, to, like okay, I wanted, I wanted to go to the temple. As a matter of fact, before we went, before my mom and I came up to to Virginia, I had a proxy recommend because my temple recommend her, my my regular temple recommend had, had run out right? and I wanted, okay. I wanted to get a regular temple recommend. So I figured, okay, my, okay. Figure have the Bishop and the stake president come over to the house, you know, interview me and sign off on the regular temple recommend. Right. But my, however, the, the Bishop came over and said that, you know, we can't do them both at the same time. However, so he gave me a temple. So he gave me, the proxy recommend okay yeah so i wanted yeah yeah so like i said i mean okay i wanted to go to the temple but you know temple recommend ran out and now i so uh so another thing that so we went through through, through, through the temple and you know i pointed out certain things and that interesting fact and now we were in the steel now we were in one of the ceiling rooms and okay, my niece who is autistic. Okay, I wanted to point out the mirrors on either end of the ceiling room, you know, and explain to them that if people kneel at the altar, you know, you know, if they look in the mirror, you know, they can see themselves many times, you know, like layer upon layer upon layer. Right. However, my niece was like, I'm in her, you know, I'm on a mission, gotta go on a mission, gotta go on a mission, gotta go, you know. Plus, at the time, you know, we all had had to wear masks, and you know, you you know, it, it kind of got, you, you know, you know, ma mask mouth, so to speak. You know, kind of like had hair, right, you know, right, mask right. mouth. Anyway, so we, so we went out, and I actually got to go through the temple a second time because. My sister, but my, my my sister, mom, niece, and niece's behavioral assistant left. So my so I so I took my brother-in-law to the temple. I, I got to go. So I guess you could say that I got to do the temple open house twice. Oh, cool! 
Yeah. Now, now the second time, you know, my brother-in-law had asked a couple, you know, his daughter asking questions and, the, you know, which, which, okay. There weren't, there were no questions being asked the first time I went through, you know, because, it, you know, because they were like, uh-huh, nice, uh-huh, yeah, nice, yeah. nice. You know, however, you know, my, my brother-in-law, you know, had asked, you know, what's this? What's that? You know, how, how does this work? You know, stuff like that. Then, yeah, so we went in and I actually showed my brother-in-law the two mirrors and we actually got to sit for, I want to say about a half hour inside the celestial room. And he's like, wow, interesting, you know, and so, so I kind of felt felt the spirit there, and okay, one of one of one of the neat things about the DC temple, and uh, okay, I don't I don't know it, if you had gone to the DC temple before it was renovated. Never been. But outside of okay, Fresno. okay, so there's like this what? little walkway, you know, covered walkway, you know, between. The temple recommend desk and the temple proper, you know, and so as I was walking, you know, you know, well, both times I was walking, I looked around and, and I was like, you know what, even though I have a proxy recommend and correct, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but okay, you have to have a regular recommend in order to go to the into the into the celestial room. Correct me if, correct me if I'm yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, you have to. But that uh, in an open house situation, then anybody can go through the uh, the, the facility. Uh, but once you uh, close the doors to the public, then you have to have a full temple recommend to get into the celestial room. Yeah. So, uh, so I was looking at the chairs and the table that was there, and I'm like, you know what? I know I have a proxy, but if I go to the temple, this will be my celestial, this will be my quote unquote celestial room because I mean, okay, I can look out the windows and just see the beauty of the temple grounds. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's that's a, that, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, so I was just wondering, so you, so now that you brought your brother-in-law, is that right, your brother-in-law went? Yeah, brother-in-law. And uh, was there any mention uh, uh, from your uh, from the previous part of your family about their experience there uh, after after you uh, were done with your brother-in-law or not at the moment? However, okay, okay, so okay, move, okay, so. In let August, me move the story along faster than it needs to be. So yeah, <laughs> you go ahead yeah, and continue yeah. on where you're at. Anyway, so in August, my brother, my my sister and brother-in-law talked me in, 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 into changing my my residence to Virginia. Then twenty, then in September, Hurricane Ian came around, hit the same area as Hurricane Charlie did back in all four. Hit four. Hit the same areas in Florida. Right. Now, 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 now in August, you know, I wanted to be a snowbird, you know, spend time up here, you know, spend the summer up here in, in, in Virginia, spend winter in Florida. I mean, after all, yeah. Christmas, 85 degrees in Florida. <laughs> Snow, you know, they call them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can wear shorts in, in Florida on Christmas Day. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, so, but Hurricane Ian, you know, changed all that. I mean, the Fort Myers area and Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel, totally destroyed. Wow. Yeah, so, so that decided, so, and my mom was going to go back, then go back late, late September, then come up and then, then drive back to Florida. Right. I would I would stay here. I I would stay in Virginia until December. Go go down to Florida, then then spend, then come back up in March. Okay. And 
so my, so my mom was like, you know what? Forget it. You know, I don't want to deal with another hurricane. <laughs> yeah, so she decided to to move up here permanently. Oh wow! Yeah, and Is then dad too, or no, 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 because there was some oh, he sort passed of away. no, well, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost right now. I'm a little lost. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my mom got remarried. Right. So, 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 so my stepdad, the one that she was married to. In in 2017, you know he 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 decided he decided to stay down in Florida in 2022 when we came up. Oh, okay, okay, I got then, you. Yeah, then there then there were some personal issues which I won't get into here. Yeah, of course not. But yeah, so so she decided to to stay up, up here, and in December, my sister and brother in law. You know, wanted all of us to move together because okay, my mom is my niece's caretaker because my niece is autistic, like I said. Right, right. So she is her caretaker. So we decided to to all live in one big house. Sure. And that's where we are today. Is okay. Where, yeah. Yeah. Have you, so. Have you have you been able to get to the temple? Uh, not a, not as of yet. Okay. However, I talked with the the eldest quorum president at the church where I'm at now, and he said that, and he he had said that he'll try and find some way, you know, for for, for me to get there. By the way, I went to the temple dedication ceremony, Good. and 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 I was like, wow, good, you know, nice. So, uh, so, uh, so from there. You, you know, that's when I'm like, you know, I want to go back to the temple. Now, at this time, okay, I was living in another city oh, in, in the D.C. area because my sister and brother-in-law lived in in another city when we came up. Right. So I went to that. So I went to the ward there. And in January, I left that ward because we were all moving into, into this big house in, in February. Right. So I went. So I. So I. So I went to another word. Now at this time, you know, my records were still in Florida, and we had Zoom. So we had had a segment meeting. You know, broadcast o over Zoom. As a matter of fact, I was a Zoom coordinator for my ward. Oh, good, good. Yeah. So then. Yeah. So then what? So, so then, you know, so as soon as I got to this new ward and new stake, you know, I, I talked with, I talked with the bishop down in Fort Myers and had my records transferred up here. Right. Now, interestingly enough, okay. Now I'm going to get medical here. Okay. So I was, so I went to the a vascular clinic and they, they found out that Blood, that the blood is flowing down the leg fine, but there's the, the great saphenous vein in the leg that's not working. So, so that's why my legs are swelling up the right, way they are. Right, right. So I went. So last month, so about yeah, about last month, I had gone in, in for a, a a venous ablation. Which meant that they were close the great saphenous vein and direct the blood to another vein. Oh wow! And okay, you know those those surgical booties. Yeah. Interestingly enough, my okay, my niece saw the surgical booties and she was like, "Are those your temple booties?" Referring back, <laughs> referring back to the temple open house where they put on those white booties. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so 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 I was sitting there like, oh, you actually remember that? That's great. That's yeah, great. and keep in mind, and keep in keeping in mind that she is six years old and autistic, so she remembers things. Wow. That's yeah, it. yeah. So what you were talking about, you know, about yes. about stuff. You know, from the temple open house. Yeah, yeah. So, 
So that kind amazing. of so that was like amazing. Yeah, amazing, yeah. So I want to get back to a little bit, and I'm going to fill in some gaps there. So conversion. What converted you to the church? Was it a spiritual experience? Was it based on biblical compared to scripture that we have? Or was it a combination of both? Combination of both, pretty much. Okay. Okay. When I when I was reading the Book of Mormon, I I remembered in the book of John, chapter 21, I think it's verse 25, that says, There were a great many other things that Jesus did and said, which, if they were all written down, I suppose the world yeah. itself cannot contain. Yeah. After I after I, I read that in John, I looked at the I looked at the book of movement and I'm like, you know what? This is one of the books mentioned in John 21, 20. Well, I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily say mentioned, but this could tie into John 21, 25. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely it opens up an avenue to say God is talked to many a people, not just to John, not just to Paul, not just to Peter, not just to Moses, not to just Abraham, not just to Isaiah, but he's talked to Nephi, Lehi, he's talked to Ammon and 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 uh the brother of Jared Mormon. He's talked to many people out throughout the earth, people we don't even know yet have heard from. I'm sure that there's more than uh, ample room for God to express himself to many people than just to a small uh, portion of his children. Exactly. And I think that clears the way that, that John 21 uh, uh, chapter, verse 25, you yeah. said? Yeah. Where it says the books, uh, that the earth could not contain the, the uh, books that would be written about the life of Jesus Christ. And I think there'd be nothing not enough to uh contain god communicating with his children uh, upon this earth if he if everything was a, it was uh written down you know and i'm sure people write important things in their life journals and things like that exactly yeah so that opens up the, the avenue for to really embrace the book of mormon saying yeah this is really you know ties into that idea so, so you have this tie together. Was there anything specific that really just, and that was one, was there anything in the uh, doctrine of the church that drew you in and like, oh, that really, really works. It's like unbelievable that anybody could uh, even uh, come up with this kind of uh, theology. I think... I think probably two things and it's in the other well well at least two things but maybe more okay one is you know I think it's article of faith either three or four that that mentions it mentions you know the you know like like three is step. three is we believe that uh a man may be be saved uh, when he lives the ordinances and laws of the gospel. Yeah. And the other one, the next one is, uh, we believe that uh, we can be saved by first faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Third, that. Pitching, third baptism uh, by immersion. And then fourth, uh, receiving the Holy Ghost by the laying on it. Yeah. Article of faith four is one of them. Also, article of faith eight, which says that, you know, we believe the Bible to be the the Word of God, as is correctly translated. We right. also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God as well, which ties in what I said earlier with with Matthew or John twenty one twenty five. Right, right. And yeah, so there's that, and and of course, article of faith. 13 you know which is like you know we we believe that if anything is praiseworthy trustworthy you know we seek after those things yeah also i think it's article of faith nine which says that we we, we believe that god has revealed 
Oh. Is revealing and will reveal all right, things. Right, right. And that that right right there, you know, after reading the Book of Mormon, after listening to General Conference and one of the talks by then President of the Quorum of the Twelve, now President of, 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 of the Church, Nelson. President about, Russell M. Nelson, yeah. Yeah, President R R R Russell M. Nelson. I think it was, you know, about about well one about revelation after he became president you know you know revelation for the church revelation for your life right but there was one about you know how how can the book of mormon change your life i think it, I, I think it was april 2017 you know where he had talked about you, you know how you know your life without the book of mormon or something like yeah like it, that and uh, yeah so there's so you're you're looking at things. Okay, does this book affect my life, and does it affect it in a positive way? Exactly. Yeah. And I think I think it's the the uh, the, the the what I go on is is uh, the, this idea that uh, it was said that by Joseph Smith that man could get near to God by the precepts within and by reading this book of Mormon. And it does. I I I concur with uh, with Rick that you can draw closer to God through reading and keeping the principles within the Book of Mormon. The Bible has its draw. Of course, it's a natural draw. Everybody accepts it. We all fall into it because it's acceptable. But the Book of Mormon presents a, a another layer of God's love for humanity, which I need to know. Uh, uh, anybody who's uh, been on the wrong path for a long time needs to know about people uh, such as uh, King Lamoni and his group who were ruthless thugs and uh, and and uh, and so many and and King Noah and how Alma escapes from uh, from that kind of mindset of of tyranny and it starts a who knew uh, uh, religious sect within that and there's so many stories even uh, King Lamoni's father was like at first when he meets Ammon and his son on the road says you need to kill the, kill this uh, uh, Nephite and Lamoni says nope and then he's uh, the King uh, Lamoni's uh, father says well I'm going to take you out and Moron uh, and Ammon says, "No, you're not." Holds that sword up to him and says, "And then uh, the uh, the father is like, I'll give you half of what I own to uh, to to preserve my life." And Ammon doesn't have any uh, uh, want for 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 money or anything like that. And he finally there's this exchange, and then they leave each other. And then and then uh, later on, this same uh, father of uh, King Lamoni is preached the gospel. And I believe it's by Alma, but I can't remember. Alma the Younger. But I can't remember, so somebody will have to help me out with that. Uh, he's like, when he preaches the gospel to him, the father is like, I'm willing to give, I want, I'll give all of my sins away to know this God. And that's that's huge. When people will give them their whole life to God in order to know mm -hmm. them and this and the the things that we have and we need stories like that to 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 help us who ch were challenged in life uh, uh for so many years about not wanting to to follow God's and his commandments we need people like that and it's, Rick I'm going to let you uh continue on with your story but I think that's an important part exactly of that. exactly okay just as you were talking, it, it kind of kind of kind of reminded me of a book that the that the other missionaries gave me back in 2003 called "A Marvelous Wicked and a Wonder" by Le Grand Richard. Yes, uh, he's my favorite apostle when it comes oh. to, <laughs> to apostolics. <laughs> but I'm sure you will agree with with these two things in the book "A Marvelous Work and a Wonder." Le Grand Richard said that the Christian churches of today may gen may be generally classified as follows. The Catholic Church, which which contends that it had 
an uninterrupted existence upon the earth since it was originally founded by Jesus Christ. Protestant churches founded by reformers who contend that the original church fell into apostasy and who, therefore, through a study of the Bible, have attempted to return to the original teachings and practices of the church. However, these, the number of these churches is evidence of how impossible it is to agree upon the teachings of the Bible when left to the wisdom of man to interpret and understand them. Because of this lack of unity, churches have continued to multiply in a further effort to return to what they consider the original teachings of Christ. Number three, those who believe that the church established by Jesus Christ while he was on, upon the earth fell into an apostate condition as predicted by the apostles and that the church could not be reestablished upon the earth merely through a reformation, but only through a restoration. And the church of Jesus Christ stands alone in this latter classification, except for a few small apostate groups that are broken away from this church. And another thing that... And after Richard had brought that out, he asked these questions. If the original church had gone astray, can a Reformation restore its power? Can a living branch be taken from a dead tree? Or must there be a new planning, a restoration? I have a question real quick. Are you reading from a screen or you just memorized that? I, I just pulled the book up. Oh, good, good. I, yeah, I got it. You're an amazing person, even to be able to read that well. From yeah. A, but I was going to make sure that the audience <laughs> know that we're not trying to trick them into anything that, you know, he's reading. Yeah, I do. Reading quite well. He reads a lot better than I do. <laughs> so his testimony has an intellectual uh, uh, value as much as his spiritual connection. So don't dismiss uh, my friend Rick here who I've grown to love in this short time we've been together. Yeah. And being somebody that cannot discern mm -hmm. uh, and read well. He does read excellently. So yeah. continue on, uh, Rick. And, and right after that, Elder Richards had, had brought up the thing about a pamphlet called Entitled The Strength of, of the Mormon, of the Mormon Position by, by Elder Orson F. Whitney of the Quorum of the Twelve. Right, right. And he related the following incident under the heading of Catholic utterance. Right. You know, saying about how the Roman, about how the member of the church came to you. You Mormons are a bunch of ignoramuses. You exactly. Know, and I'm quoting it from memory, so I'll paraphrase it. You Mormons are a bunch of ignoramuses. You don't even know the strength of your own position. There's only two tenables that work simultaneously it's either the the catholic uh uh theology or it's the latter-day saint theology either one has to be right it's either uh, a continuance of priesthood authority through peter or it's a restoration and then he says if it's the if it's the restoration then not only are the catholics wrong but the protestants are wrong with us because they're apostate from us and if it's a Catholic, if the Catholics are right, then the Mormons are wrong, and the apostates are still wrong. And yeah. if it was a restoration that needed to be, then Joseph Smith is absolutely a value or a, a necessity in God's plan. Exactly. Now, it one thing really that, is that way. Yeah. Now, one thing that that Elder Richards did not say in the book that is is Elder Whitney's reply. To this learned man, he said, and this is coming from the strength of the woman position. Whitney said, "My reply was substantially as follows," and I'm and I'm 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 meaning this straight from that particular book. Okay, I got it on. I got it saved on notepad, but but it is from the book. Right, right, right. I agree with you, Doctor, in nearly all that you have said, but don't deceive yourself with the notion that we Mormons are not aware of the strength of our position. We are better aware of it than anyone else. We have not all been to college. We cannot all speak the dead languages. We may be ignoramuses, as you say, but we know that we are right, and we know that you are wrong. I was just as frank with him as he had been with me. You know, so so well, like you said funny. earlier, you know, you know, we know that we're right, and... And they're wrong. And if the Catholics are wrong, then the Protestants are wrong. 
Yeah. But if the Catholics are right, then not only are the Latter Day Saints wrong, but also the, the Protestants Catholic, are yeah. wrong. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy. So you you read uh, the the uh, marvelous work in the wonder, uh, and the uh, and other things. You you uh, obviously for the last four years now, you really have solidified your uh, uh, membership within the church. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, well, and. What, you, what about you? What about uh, things that come up? I'm sure that polygamy has come up. Blacks and the priesthood have come up. Have you heard of these things before? I okay. So my brother and I. So, so my brother and I and I have been going on walks in in the late evening, sometime in the morning, and you know, <laughs> you know. So okay. I I think he's more interested in, in in the church than my mom is. Right. You know. You know. Because I mean, okay, he is more of a curious mind. Right. So he so so I, so I had brought up you know stuff about the golden plates and you know the, the vision that that Joseph Smith had and, and a few other things. Now, we hadn't brought up, you know, the polygamy or the blacks and the priesthood. However, on Facebook, and I, I'm involved in, in a few Facebook groups, and, and I think we're involved in some of the same Facebook groups. Right. So so you probably you see... You this out all the time, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're yeah. very aware of, the, of maybe what people would call historical problems, we would call triumphs. Exactly. And not only that, but okay, one of the reasons why I, I engage them is because, okay, I, I, okay, being a part of the Convention of States, you know, you know, I've seen a lot of people, you know, have the wrong misconception about it and bring up, you know, falsities. And, and I try to use what I call the Andrew Breitbart method to try and, you know, counter those those falsities. I you I, I pretty much try try and do the same thing with those who bring up the fact that the churches are called, you know, and just as you know, you know, the polygamy and the blacks and the pre now now I've not dealt too much with the blacks and the priesthood or the polygamy aspects, but you know, more or less like the theological aspects, you know, you know, Satan is Lucifer's brother, this and everything else. So right now, okay, whenever I see, okay, in the past, I would always in, engage with them and try and basically just beat up my keyboard, you know, trying to prove them right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but now what I do is I'm like, you know what? Thank you for confirming the fact that I have found the truth in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because the more they try and push the stuff on me, you know, the more, the more entrenched I am in it. Yeah, I yeah. Whenever somebody attacks Joseph Smith personally, oh, I I just I remember, and I'm I'm going to repeat this story, and I'm going to let you know about it. I also, maybe you haven't watched that video. Uh, so, whenever I was coming back to the church, I. I joined when I was nine years old because it was the thing to do in the family. My mom and dad were not members and they never became, except there's a different story about my dad later on. But um, so I, we fell uh, uh, inactive after we went for about six months or so. Eventually I was, uh, I, I started living with my great aunt who was a member uh, very active member. She doesn't. Uh, she she continues on continues on in activity up to about the age where I'm about 16, 17. I fall away. Then at uh, 31 or 32 or somewhere around there, I start to come back, or I start to investigate. I have no reason to come back. I'm like everything's fine, uh, but now I see my life was a disaster, but. There was a uh, so I'm involved in reading and doing a lot of things, researching the church, but I'm not really converted at the time. And then uh, a, a friend of mine who's against the church, always feeding me stuff. He says uh, Joseph Smith only created the religion to 
uh, gain power over the people and to 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 uh, um, to be a polygamist, basically. And I stood there, and there was a, a workbench between us. And I said, and I stood there, and I said, and it was like a roaring lion. I said, there is nothing you or anybody else could say that would ever make me convinced that Joseph Smith was not a prophet of God. And then he walked on. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, when they challenged, uh, that was the first time and it hasn't left me since. Now, I'll, uh, we all have downs and ups with our convert, mm -hmm. with our test or with that feeling of connection with that, with that, uh, realization that we do have a prophet of God or, and Joe Smith was a prophet of God or God is, we always have those downs and those, but it always peaks when somebody challenges it in a, in a, in such a grotesque way. Anyway, final word, I'm going to give you a final word. Get, you got as much time as you want, but, uh, we're going to have to, uh, uh, soon, uh, depart. Yeah, no worries. I mean, well, we could do yeah. this again. We could uh, we could have some other discussions on some other subjects that you're yeah, very familiar yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. I do to. not mind coming back at all. You know, because I, I mean, I've enjoyed this, and I and like I said earlier, AJ. You know, it's, you know, it's a pleasure actually talking with you and actually now seeing you face to face. Thank you. Or 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 in this case, you, you know, window to window. Yeah. But yeah, you know, t to tie this all up, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I am kind. of, you know, I, I mean, the more people kind of come at me with, with with the falsities, you know, the more that I am convinced that this church is true, and you know, and and and, and people just and if people let me down, you know, I just you know focus on Christ, and you know, with with my disability, you know, it's like you know, I remember. Second Corinthians chapter twelve verses seven through ten about Paul and the and the thorn in, in in his side and you know just focus on spiritual things and if if, if what you are hearing you know you know I mean I am an open book so feel free to ask me anything you know you know you know my website will be posted my and I'm always on Facebook and Twitter and. True, true social. I am a very social person on social media, you know. So, so if any of you have any questions after this, you know, feel free to to hit me up and ask me any questions in Messenger. And yeah, so I, so again, AJ, I thank you for this, and I look forward to coming back at any time. I have to throw this in there real quick. You, which, uh, which uh, uh, debate or which one did you watch? Which. With uh, uh, Randy, um, Robert Bo Robert, Robert Boylan, Boylan, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, the one where he, where he, he hit a, he hit us. I think it was Diego about, yeah, he, you know, sola scriptura, and Paul jumped in and said, Charles Spurgeon and Boylan and, and Robert was like, uh, I asked fourth century. It's the, I saw I, that. I, you know what uh, I was, I was watching their commentary. Uh, I was watching their video commentary on. Uh, on my uh, on that debate or my style of debating they said oh aj doesn't know how to debate and i'm like no i don't know know how to be mean and nasty with people <laughs> you know what to be fair you to be fair you are just a moderator right you know so so like you know okay and that's what i like because okay going back in, in, into history it's like the Stephen Douglas debates back in 1858. You know how they had, you know, the moderator said, okay, enough time to this side, enough time to this side, you know, you know, debate your points. And you're just sitting back, you know, chiming in every now and then, you know, to try and bring things back. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I even offered Robert Boyle an opportunity to debate me on the, uh, the, uh, uh, the thing about the marriage and uh, the resurrection. So, and he refused. So, mm -hmm. what do you know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Rick, we are going to bring Rick back. Uh, I'm sure that he's uh, very much um, versed in the Bible and uh, and and the, and uh, other scriptures that we have, and uh, he's been a a, a pleasure. 
and uh, we'll definitely bring him back for some more commentary on some other subjects. And it's been a pleasure, Rick. Thank you for coming. Thank you for Rick, having me. You're welcome. And this is a Latter Day Saint, and we're out of here. <laughs> you have a good one, Rob. Uh, Rick. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you again. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye.